हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी अ जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक एडवाइस टू स्टूडेंट्स ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माय सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद सो इन टुडे सत्संग वी विल कंटिन्यू टू एक्सप्लोर द एक्सरसाइज इन ब्रेथ अवेयरनेस एंड मेडिटेशन एज वी सेड Uh, this breath is very powerful so when we consciously put our attention to it we find deep relaxation and also infusing of pranas within our body so as you watch your normal breathing in an effortless way just breathe in and out deep breathing feel your body absorbing energy through your breath as the breath enters your lungs feel that your body is like the ocean shore receiving the tide upon its sandy beach like the beach your body is exhilarated by the touch of the universal ocean of prana then with the outgoing breath feel that the tide is turning back leaving the sandy shore and your body refreshed your body is thus bathed and refreshed at every moment by the surging ocean of the universal prana just like how the waves come and go back into the ocean while breathing in feel that a stream of om permeated by the divine presence is entering through your nostrils with each incoming breath feel that your consciousness is expanding gradually and that you are dissolving your ego in the vast expansion of the self with each outgoing breath feel that you are gradually coming back from infinite expansion and then returning to individual consciousness gently without interference observe your breathing and mentally associate the so hum mantra with your breath feel that the incoming breath represents so and the outgoing breath represents hum so means that the divine inner self divine energy which is beyond the mind time space and ego and hum means i am the soham means that am i and with every breath you take you are asserting your oneness with god the divine self so it is a great blessing a wonderful exercise to practice whether you are in your office or at work in between even two or three minutes of this nectarine shower is enough to give you deep relaxation and de-stress your mind now let's explore the topic of the value of a vegetarian diet pure food makes your body healthy and full of vitality and helps keep your mind clean calm balanced and peaceful vegetarian food is purer than non-vegetarian food and therefore provides many benefits for the body and also the mind furthermore the human body is not well designed to receive nutrients from meat nutrition is assimilated more efficiently from a vegetarian diet the sages say jaisa khao an waisa bane man meaning whatever you eat the type of food you eat makes up your mind whether it is of violence or of compassion depending on which food as the foods are also of three gunas rajasik tamasik and satvik non vegetarian food is risky for your health because of so many artificial substances that are given to commercially raised animals by eating meat you are increasing the level of toxins in your body whether you recognize it consciously or not you also never know what diseases were present or about to develop in the animal's body when it was killed 
these diseases may not be detected when the meat is inspected according to usual standards. There is a humorous anecdote about a man who was being served dinner at a party. When the meat was offered to him, he declined saying, I will have everything else you have but not the meat. Why have you become a vegetarian? The host asked. Oh no, he replied. I am a meat inspector <laughs> and therefore I know the quality of that meat and where it comes from. Being a vegetarian also helps you certainly to maintain a more joyous and elevated state of mind. When you eat meat, one part of your mind knows how the animal was brought to the slaughterhouse and killed, how its entrails were removed and how it was cut up. However, one never wants to think about these things, especially while they eat meat due to sense pleasures. Mind and life is very dear, of course, to all animals. Just like to us, when an animal is killed, it experiences great fear, which is recorded in its body in a subtle way. So, when you later eat that animal, you are also imbibing the impression of that fright. A carefully planned vegetarian diet, therefore, keeps the body healthy, free of toxins, and most important of all, it keeps the sensitive mind free of the subtle negative impressions that are generated by the killing of animals. If you are eating non-vegetarian food, you would benefit greatly by gradually moving away from it and beginning to enjoy more nourishing vegetarian food that can be prepared in the most delightful and favorable ways. Let's move to the topic of the search for beauty. Amazing as it may seem, your body is not your real self. You are in essence a spirit, a soul. Your body is merely a vehicle that enables you to function in this world for the purpose of evolving spiritually and ultimately attaining enlightenment or God realization. As you grow up, your body changes in size, shape, strength and health and eventually it dies. However, you are ever unchanging, imperishable, eternal. The real you is perfect. That is your Atma or your consciousness. When you were an infant, you were so tiny that an adult could just pick you up with one hand. Now your body has grown and changed considerably. Then and now the inner you is still the same. Even when death comes to you, as a spirit, you will still be the same. Like an old garment that gets thrown away and replaced, the body is discarded at the time of death and another one is acquired. There is no real loss. Only the body disappears. The Atma, consciousness, the same you, your likes, dislikes, habits, traits, they all <laughs> continue to stay with you perpetually. When the real you has not been affected in any way. So that is the journey of purification. That is why we say do good things, think good things, be pure and attain self-realization in this very life. If the body is not the real you at all, then why does the world give so much importance to it? Why are so many billions and billions and trillions of dollars and hours spent upon each year on beautifying the body and covering it with elegant clothing? Like many people, you may feel that being beautiful pertains to one's physical uh, appearance, external ap appearance. Having stylish clothes, a good looking face, an attracting body. And this is why so many people continue to have plastic surgery, Botox injections, uh, young looking uh, creams, and etc. As you grow wiser, however, you will realize that the real physical beauty depends on radiant health and abundant energy and that the highest form of beauty lies not in the body but in one's mind. You may from an external point of view be quite beautiful or handsome but internally 
you may be terribly burdened by ugly thoughts and feelings that disfigure your mind. Inner beautification is far, far more important than decorating on what is on the surface. The person who has devoted much time to caring for his external appearance, but has paid little attention to beautifying and purifying his mind, cultivates a beauty that is only skin deep, only external. Profound beauty is mind deep. It reflects a healthy and pure mind. The mind becomes a reservoir of beauty when it is filled with joyous thoughts, when it radiates harmony and peace, and when it is able to conquer anger with love, egoism with humility, and selfishness with generosity of the heart. So with this we continue conclude our satsang for today but we will continue it tomorrow hari om tat sat divine blessings to you